In this video shows how to tune up a TWNC 1505 cavity notch filter. What we have here is a notch filter. You'll notice a few things different between this and a um, bandpass filter. It's still a single tuning element here. Uh, you'll see that uh, there's no uh, tuning element on here. Just uh, the ability to turn this back and forth to uh, adjust the coupling and this has been added to uh, get a match outside of the notch area that this notch filter uh, provides. This is where you could have a second port uh, but in this case is an older uh, unit that uh, was repurposed for this unit and we've taken out the loop on that side. Uh, basically it goes in and out right here and this sucks out a given frequency. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Once again I've uh, covered the whole band here from uh, 160, uh, uh, center frequency of 160 and I've uh, set up the frequency here from 140 to 180 megahertz to cover the entire band from the 2 meter ham band up through uh, 175 which is the upper end. The actual range for uh, the product is I believe 148 to 175. They've gone a little bit over on the either end to uh, give us um, a little better view here. And uh, you see that uh, frequency 1 here is where this is a half dB down and a half dB down here at this frequency number 3 which is 155.8 and then 155.0000 right here uh, we have a notch that's 19.33 dB down. So that's a pretty good notch and uh, we aren't going to bother anything uh, uh, outside of 153.266 that, that is below that and we're not going to uh, create any problems from 155.8 and up. Uh, we can operate as close as that uh, on either side of this filter as tuned at the moment. To make the next measurement, I'm, I've used a, uh, a box here that is a uh, return loss bridge, so the tracking generator comes into here, the output uh, goes into the spectrum analyzer, and this port checks the uh, return loss from this uh, device. This is a precision load, and this cable is uh, uh, about, about a half wave at this frequency. So we, uh, we have everything that we need to get a return loss from this uh, situation. So I uh, normalized the return loss bridge with an open circuit uh, and uh, you see at uh, 0.4 here on the blue trace at 155.000 we have minus 1.39 uh, dB of return loss which is expected. It's at, at a notch so the match is terrible of course. Um, number one here uh, has been moved over to be at the 17 dB point and number 3 also to the 17 dB point and operating inside uh, of that range would not be a good idea because you're going to impact your match on whatever else is hanging on the same antenna or whatever you're connecting to. Notice that you're up uh, going uh, bad up here but it's still okay, it's well, well below that but the same thing over here but across the 140 to 160 range the return loss is well below 20 dB all the way across there and that had to do with the uh, short piece of coaxial cable you saw on the top of the uh, uh, can there between the T and the uh, notch filter. That's what that's there for. So anything from here on down and here on up is not going to be impacted by using this notch filter but anything that's between 1 and 3 here uh, is not a good place to operate. Um, you may be able to get closer than that by uh, reducing the notch depth uh, and adjusting the um, coupling, uh, but uh, by and large this is for this kind of a notch that's almost 20 dB you, uh, you're going to see uh, areas where you cannot operate without having some impact on the match and the uh, loss of whatever it is that you're connecting in there. For more accuracy, I've brought in the span 
here to 10 megahertz. Uh, so the Rigel DSA815 has 600 points across in 10 megahertz, giving us a little more accuracy in our both our levels and our frequency. And as you see, the uh, null here is actually uh, shown now as 22 dB, uh, which is better than the 18 we saw before, or 19, I guess, is what we saw. Um, and uh, we see again that uh, at 152.4, we have 17 dB return loss. Anything below that would be usable. And we have uh, 157.466. 17 dB. Anything above that would be useful. You might even get away with using uh, plus and minus 1 megahertz here uh, because you're only a 2, a 2 dB, uh, excuse me, a 2 to 1 standing wave there, which on a receive application uh, might be uh, okay to use. Let's look at what it looks like if I change the span from 10 to 2 megahertz. Now this shows up the limitations of this instrument. I saved this over a 10 meg span, but you can see the coarseness of the selections of frequencies that it uh, calculated when it was making the sweep. So you see some ragged edges here. And, uh, but what I want to show is that, again, we're about, nine, about 8 dB probably down here and about 9 dB here, which is about 2 to 1. So in a receive application, that might be useful um, as far as the match is concerned. And certainly, uh, we don't have much loss. If I was to re-scan the uh, at 2 megahertz here, you'd see that there would be a lot more points in between than there was when we took the 10 meg uh, sample. So we've in review. We have tuning elements for a TWNC 1505 cavity notch filter in the first example. We looked how to find the notch uh, where it's tuned presently by setting the frequency span to a wide span. We've set, shown how to set up the DSA 815TG or any other analyzer to measure return loss. We've reduced the span to 10 MHz to obtain better frequency accuracy because there are only 600 sample points in the uh, span on the Rigel unit, and we reduce the span to 2 megahertz to demonstrate the coarse nature of the frequency step accuracy when the curves were saved at 10 megahertz.